Good morning, Monticello Christian Church family and friends. Advent greetings on this, the fourth Sunday of Advent. We have just a few announcements before we continue with our worship service. We want to remind you, of course, we have Christmas Eve services at 7 p.m. and 11 p.m. on Christmas Eve, and all are welcome to join us for our celebration of Christ's birth with candlelight and songs and celebration. We also want to remind you that Wednesday morning and Friday morning Bible studies will resume in January. Uh, we have completed for the Christmas season um, our studies and will take back up in the new year. Uh, I invite you to join me as we begin our fourth Sunday of Advent service with a word of prayer. Everlasting Father, we're called to proclaim hope, peace, joy, and love in your name. Open our hearts and our spirits today to receive with great joy the love that you have for us. Make us bold enough to proclaim with faith the coming of your kingdom, the coming of your justice, the coming of your peace, and may we sing out the good news of salvation, trusting in fulfillment of your promises. In your name we pray. Amen. God's beloved, let us go before the Lord in prayer on behalf of ourselves and those that we know. Glorious and blessed God, we give you thanks and praise. We declare your faithful love in the morning and your faithfulness by night. You make us glad for your reconciling work among us, and we sing for joy. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God, our refuge and our rock. Help us to be still in your presence, to grow strong, depending on your strength and not our own. Cast out our fear, cast out our sin, enter in and be born in us this day. We confess that we are far too scared too much of the time, and we ask that you would free us from fear and worry. You've known us since before we were born. You created us with your hands, and you love us exactly as you have created us. For you are good and make all things well. You know us inside and out, and we belong to you. Help us to remember. Keep us close. Help us not to miss out on your grace. Save us from our disbelief. And hear now our silent prayers as we open our hearts to you on behalf of those on our prayer list, those that we bear in our hearts as well as ourselves. We thank you, dear God, for the blessings of this Christmas season. Thank you for health and home, for parents, for children, sisters, brothers, good friends. We thank you for our baptism and place in your church. We pray for those who are sad and for whom this time is too difficult. We pray for the sick, the poor, those in prison, those at war. Pour out your grace upon all your creation, O God of glory, O Prince of peace. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Emmanuel, Son of righteousness, light and life to all who still teaches us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
we today celebrate the hope and peace and joy and love that we find in the birth of Jesus, may we also see the same in his death and resurrection. On the night Christ gathered with his disciples to share a meal, he took a loaf of bread, and after giving thanks to God for it, he broke it and gave it to them and said, This is my body which is broken for you, and as often as you shall eat of it, do so in remembrance of me. He then took the cup and again gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to his disciples and said, This is my blood which is shed for you, and as often as you shall drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. Christ is our hope of rescue. We find true peace in him. His presence is the fullness of joy and love is found in no greater measure than Christ giving up his life for ours. Let us in celebration and in remembrance partake in the Lord's Supper. We have been called to build up the kingdom of God, so we too have a reason to celebrate. Gathered here, we praise God through song and through scripture. And let us now also offer our tangible signs of gratitude, confident that God's promises will be fulfilled through the ministries supported by our gifts. Let us come and remember. Let us come and give in celebration of what Christ has done for us for his glory now and always. Amen. passage today comes from the book of Acts, the first chapter beginning in the ninth verse. After he had said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. We are in the last throes of our celebration of Advent as we move toward the celebration of Christmas, the birth of Christ into the world. And our theme for Advent has been unexpected. This completely unexpected aspect that God would come into the world as one of us. And all the many ways that we, in our own minds, would have thought would have been the logical and the reasonable thing that God has gone and done with us, through us. It's truly unexpected. Today, as we have moved through looking at the prophecies, pointing toward the day when the Deliverer would come, the unexpected things that occurred at the birth of Christ, and in following the birth of Christ, how unexpected individuals were called upon to bear witness to it, we now reflect on today. We reflect on our unexpected Savior. 
this unexpected joy brought by our unexpected Savior in an unexpected way. We look at today. We move forward to where we are now, millennia removed from that not-so-silent night, and yet still Christ is our Emmanuel, God with us. That all the self-proclaimed saviors in the millennia prior, they rest in the ground. Yet Christ is with us still to this day. The long-awaited, long-expected Christ, Messiah, Deliverer, Redeemer. He arrived unexpectedly, but God's people, they waited all the same. They waited millennia from the time God promised that he would send himself to come and set things right, to forgive their sin and deliver them from the chains that so easily bound them. And God's people waited. Now, we, we who are marked as Christ's own, we who bear his name, we who are also God's people, we await his coming again. It was proclaimed that Christ would come and he did. And Christ told us as he left, he spoke these words that fall just prior to our reading this morning. For it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And then he ascended before their very eyes. And we don't know when Christ will return to us. It could be before I finish the message. It could be many years from now. But what we do know is that Christ's promise, God's promise, the promise of the Spirit, they've never fallen unfulfilled. And so we wait as the generations did before his first arrival. We await his coming to us and and. As we've seen throughout this entire series, God's people were caught unawares. Will we be caught off guard? Will he come unexpectedly? Will Christ return and find us not ready? We, we just dislike waiting. I don't think there's a one of us that, that seems to find any joy or draw any satisfaction from having to wait. We dislike waiting so very much. Especially this time of year, these lines in Walmart. This time of year is crazy, and we get in these lines, and we're just filled with frustration. We go to the doctor's office, and they have an entire room dedicated to waiting. And we don't like that. We want to get in and get out. We, we can boil things down to, we don't like waiting for our hot pockets. Have you had a hot pocket? It, you, you usually... If you have time to plan something and, and cook it, well, that's, you know, that, that means you've had the, the time and the forethought to do so. A hot pocket is there when you've had no time and you're hungry. And so you have to wait on it. You have to wait for the hot pocket to cook. Then you have to wait for the hot, hot pocket to cool before you can eat it. We don't like waiting. I've got two words. Lafayette traffic. We... We don't like waiting. We don't like waiting to get the test back and, and see what our grade was. We also don't like waiting to get the results of the test back. We don't like waiting in the waiting room for the test results. What is it that we hate so much about waiting? What is that aspect about waiting that we hate too much. Is it, is it because we think that we are too significant to wait? Are we too important to wait? Are we too busy to wait? We dislike waiting because it takes us out of control of the situation. When we're standing there in line at Walmart waiting to, to buy our Christmas gifts and our groceries and our Hot Pockets, it takes us out of the situation where we were in control, and now we're not. When we're making our way to the mall in Lafayette to get Christmas gifts or a Hot Pocket, 
we're out of control. When we're there waiting on the results of the test, we're taken out of control. We're, we're at a loss. And we don't like that. And Advent reminds us of this. Advent, the season of Advent, anticipation, expectation, these are all hallmark, hallmarks of that season. So maybe this time of year is something that's uncomfortable. As we purposefully enter into a time of waiting, we recognize the waiting that God's people pass through generation to generation to generation, waiting for the Deliverer to come. And we too now stand in a time of waiting. We experience with all of God's people the waiting that it took for God to come into the world at the appointed time to deliver us. That looks backwards into history, into his story, the story of Christ. We now look forward to the future. And glory to God that we get to experience this waiting. That we as God's people who are marked as Christ's own get to experience this time of revelation and anticipation and expectation. The fact of the matter is, it reminds us that as we don't like waiting because it makes us feel out of control, may we thank God and give glory that someone is in control. That God is in control. May we use this time of Advent to prepare our hearts. May this time of Advent humble us. May we experience the waiting. And may it prepare and humble us. May we use this time to ponder, to wonder, to consider the depth of what has happened. Of what the implications of God coming into the world, being our Emmanuel, is for us. And the implications of Christ coming again. Consider what love drew Christ to come for us, be with us, die for us, and rise for us. Just consider that. Today, our sins were as scarlet. His love cleansed us white as snow. You want a white Christmas? We sing it. Consider Christmas as a time to remember that your sins were cleansed as white as snow. And that he will return as he left. Our passage today points this out plainly. Why are you looking up? Why are you looking up? Why are you standing there looking into the sky? The same Jesus who's been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way as you have seen him go. Christ came and lived. He died. Christ will come again. Will we be ready? Christ will advent us, arrive again. Advent means arrival. We look to his first arrival. We await his coming in glory. May we be ready. May this time of Advent, this time of waiting, be a time that sharpens us, prepares us. The, as the anticipation of a child awaiting Christmas morning, may we, in the fullness of joy, await the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who will come upon this earth and, and transform us and this world to perfection. Christ seeks to redeem us. That his arrival into this world would proclaim his glory and power over all of creation and over sin. Jesus seeks to forgive you. If we would but receive this gift. The, the, we all on our minds have gifts. Gifts from our grandparents, gifts from our kids, gifts from our, our local bank branch. But the gift that is offered to us beyond all compare is that gift of salvation. May we receive it today. And if we bear the name of Christ, may we celebrate it in our waiting that we have been redeemed. And are awaiting our entrance into the presence of Jesus Christ. Today, may we proclaim with all that we are, 
the coming of Christ and celebrate his coming into this world as our Savior. For his glory, let us enter Christmas with thanksgiving and praise. Glory be to God and joy upon those his peace rests. Amen. go forth into the world celebrating that Christ has come and will come again. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.